everybody, it's Chris here with Off-Road Farm and today we're going to tear into this Dana 60. So we're just going to break it down, we're going to check out all of our bearings, axle shafts, kingpin bushings, see what kind of condition everything's in. It is out of an 88K30 and I don't know how much service this thing has seen. It actually still has the original ratio tag on the chunk. So we're going to open everything up, see how bad it is, see how much we got to replace. First thing we're going to do is we're just going to try to get the drag link, the tie rod, and the steering stabilizer out of the way. If you're having trouble getting your cotter pin out, try pulling it out with a set of side cutters or some dikes. really makes getting it out easy. Inch and a sixteenth on this castle nut. If you're going to hammer out your tie rod ends, make sure you take that castle nut, flip it upside down, screw it back on the tie rod. That way when you go to knock it out, you don't damage up your threads. Both of the steering stabilizer bolts are three quarters. Now you can use a big hammer, but I'm going to try this air chisel with a hammer bit in it. Now that we've got our drag link out, we're just going to go ahead and remove our caliper. Again, we're just going to use a quarter inch hex. We'll just use a hammer and a punch to drift this key out. It sort of acts like a wedge to hold the caliper in. If you haven't disconnected your brake line like I have and your caliper is still really tight, you may need to use a big screwdriver and push against that inner pad, push that piston back just a little bit so you can get it off. Now we're going to start on the hub. First we need to remove the Phillips screw in the middle of that selector switch. On the outside, we're just going to take these bolts out. They're a T20 on my truck. Remember that this is spring loaded, so we want to loosen up these bolts a little at a time. And then before we take the last one all the way out, we just want to put our hand over it so it doesn't fly off. All right. There you can see there's a little Phillips screw. We need to take that out. Now we need to get the snap ring that goes around the outside. This snap ring should have a notch in the end of it. If you use a small screwdriver, you can usually get right in that notch, pry it up, and then kind of twist your screwdriver and pop it out. And once you get it started, it comes out real easy. Now we've got a snap ring in here we gotta get out. Put two of your bolts back in the hub body and that'll make pulling it out a lot easier. Now it's time to get the spindle nuts off. This is a two and a half inch spindle nut socket. You'll have a spindle nut, a retaining washer, and then another spindle nut. So 
There's the first nut. Now we just need to get off the little retainer. And there's our inner nut. Now we just need to pull the hub off. Now we're just going to loosen up these nuts that hold on the dust shield. Now we need to pull off the caliper bracket. Now it might be stuck on there pretty good. Mine was. Just take a dead blow, hit it a couple times, maybe get a screwdriver behind it. Once you get it started, it'll wiggle right off. There we go. When it comes time to get your spindle off, do not use a hard hammer. Use a dead blow or a mallet. I like to hit it around the outside ring a little bit, try to loosen it up, and then I tap it a little bit more gently on the actual spindle to try to rock it back and forth. Just take your time, work it slow, you don't want to tear your spindle up. Our spindle. So now we're going to pull out the axle. Just watch your fingers around the universal. These bolts are nine sixteenths. Ooh, I got lucky there. I almost made a big mess. The inside looked great whenever I opened it up. The ring gear is in great shape. All the teeth were there. And 
The markings on the ring gear match the ratio tag. We've got four tens. Now we're going to start working on this kingpin. Turn this knuckle off three quarters. Don't forget this top cap is under a lot of spring pressure, so we want to back these bolts out a little bit more evenly than I did here. Just a little bit at a time, all along the four corners, let that top cap raise up a little bit more evenly. My bottom kingpin caps are quite a bit different than the normal ones. These have adjustable camber in them, so they're going to disassemble quite a bit different than a normal one. We're going to remove two bolts on one side and leave two bolts on the other. That lets me get this one inch nut off of the adjustable camber part. So you take this nut off and then there's actually a washer behind that. that bottom plate actually has a recess for that washer and that's what locks in your adjustable camber. You take these back out. So this is a bushing here around the lower kingpin. We gotta get it out. So I put the bottom plate on backwards since it has that recess for that washer. And then I'm gonna put the nut back on the lower kingpin. And that lets me try to jam it with a wrench. And if I can get that bushing started just enough, I can grab it with a pair of vice grips. There we go. And there's the knuckle off. Before you go out and pressure wash your axle, if you're not going to re-gear or redo your front bearings, make sure we stuff a rag in the end of this axle tube. They'll keep all that grime from washing down and rolling in your bearings. So I've got all my parts that I've disassembled out here and I'm just going to hit it with a hot water pressure washer. So I got caliper brackets, dust shields, spindles. Um, I don't have my axles out there. I did them later, but then I also obviously have the main axle housing. 
Now, I don't know if you noticed or not, but whenever I was backing out with the tractor, somehow, after I did the little video shot of me putting the rag in the axle tube, I pulled it out of that side, shoved it in the short side, forgot to put one back in the long side. So I ruined most of the bearings inside of my carrier, but no big deal. I was planning on replacing all of those anyway. Now, one thing I will say, I'm a big fan of wearing a full face shield when you're using a hot water pressure washer, especially on something like this axle housing where you've got a lot of nooks and crannies. You are going to get some splash back. That water's hot. There's going to be grime and grit and, and hot grease in it. Don't take a chance. Wear some eye protection. That's why I'm wearing a full face shield. After we get done pressure washing everything, we just want to coat it up with some grease or some oil of some kind. We just want to protect every all of our machine surfaces from rusting since it's probably going to be a few days before I have a chance to put it back together. All right, guys, so there's the Dana 60 teardown. So the only thing I haven't done so far, you might have noticed I did knock out these dust caps or the bottom kingpin bearing races. Just going to leave those for now. I still got a lot, lot more to do. Uh, but I wanted to thank everybody for watching. If you like the video, please hit the thumbs up. If you want to see more like this, hit the subscribe button. I've got 100 subscribers now. Wow, that's awesome. I never thought I'd get that high. So I want to just thank everybody for tuning in. We got a lot more to do with this axle. We got hydro assist. We got crossover steering. Stay tuned for more.